Okay, so what happened on day one of the Mexico Major? It was Monday, August 16th. This was the first day of groups, and as you can see, if you weren't aware, teams were divided into four groups, Group A, Group B, Group C, Group D. They all have four teams except for Group B, which had a team that couldn't make it, so there were 15 teams in total. We played 13 games, and these are the results after those 13 games. We have BDS and Liquid going flawless. If you go to overtime, you lose a point, and if you still win, uh, so it's the same system as the NAL, where win in regulation is three points, win in overtime is two points, loss in overtime is one point, and loss in regulation is zero points. So we have the point totals here. You need to be top two in your group to advance to the playoffs. So BDS are looking really good. This team's pretty tight with these three teams just being separated by you know two points from top to bottom. Uh, this group is a little bit indeterminate so far. Everyone plays everyone in their group twice. Whoops. Uh, everyone plays everyone in their group twice. So there still is potential for a lot of teams to come back. SSG leads their group, but the other two teams haven't played each other yet. So if one of these teams wins in regulation, they can pass SSG in points. Even if Furio wins in overtime, they'll still beat SSG on points and the tiebreaker. Although I'm not 100% sure how tiebreakers are working in this event. And then in Group C, uh, pretty close as well, except for G2. But uh, these guys haven't played each other, uh, Damwon and NIP. So something might happen there. And then this was supposed to be the group of death, Liquid, Invictus, Empire, and TSM. TSM had to sub out Merc because he got sick before the event. So he, well, he isn't here. Pojo's here playing instead. And TSM lost both their games, very unfortunately. So this, this was the progression of games throughout the day. BDS beat Cyclops. This was expected. Probably this was expected too. Although this could have gone either way. SSG beat Navi. This was a pretty back and forth game until SSG pulled ahead at the end. BDS beat Team 1. Probably also an expected result. And then Liquid versus TSM. Uh, again, probably also expected. Especially considering the fact that TSM is now playing with Pojo instead of Merc. And then Liquid beats Empire. This probably could have gone either way. But I would assume that more people thought Liquid would win than Empire. And then this was the first unexpected, big unexpected results of the day. DZ beat G2 7-2, and NJR went 19 and two in nine rounds. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you this. Like it, it, it was, it was incredible. Um, let me show you the stats for this, and then I'll show you the two, the only two recorded, quote unquote, better performances on CGG. So let me switch this over. This is the 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 highest rated. Technically, this was a best of three between Team Liquid and Room Factory, and Room Factory is the lineage that would become Team Empire. They have Joystick and Shepard still, and Shockwave was on Team Empire. Uh, Nesk, over the course of two games, went 32-9, and nine, plus 7-0 seven on, ent seven on entry, 100% cost, 2.29 KPR, 2.64 rating. Uh, NJR, as we'll see in a minute, he went 19-2. So, you know, you can slice this how you want. This is over two games, so if you divide this in two, it'd be 16 and four and a half. I mean, I guess a lot more impressive, 19 and two. But this is over less rounds on average. I think it... Where does it show it? Yeah, it was 5-3 and a 5 So this is back when you only needed to get to five wins to win a game. So eight and then six, so an average of seven. So shorter games, but the... Yeah, I don't know. It, it's up to you to decide if this is more impressive or not. Like, this is a long time ago. This is SI 2018. And, well, yeah, Nets just went insane. This It's a higher KPR, 2.29. And let me just show the other one. So this is Ninjas in Pajamas versus FaZe Clan. This was back in Pro League Season 10 uh, in 2019. This was something like two years ago. A little bit shy of two years ago, I think. It was around, I don't I don't remember the date for the actual game, but it was the it was, tor it was around the end of 2019. Definitely the second half of 2019. Uh, Muzi put up an 18 and 4, 2.56 rating, 3 and 0 on entry, 89% cost, 2.0 KPR. This is actually a higher rating than NJR got in the game. He got a 2.51 rating. And so if we compare it, uh, you'll see it in a minute, but he went 19 and 2. So he went, he had one more kill, two for your death. So he had, he was plus three higher on kill death differential. I think he went 2 and 0 on entry. So one fewer entry kill. He had 100% cost. He had two point something K, higher KPR, 
I think higher survival rate, and he didn't have the 1vxs. So the only thing Muzi in this game has over NJR, and this is the same scoreline, this is 7-2 as well. The only thing Muzi has over NJR in that other game is he has the two NVXs and he has one more entry kill. NJR has better kill death differential, he has better KPR, he has better cost, he has better survival. Uh, I think they actually have identical headshot rates as well. So up to you to decide again, and now I'll just show you the NJR performance. So just look at this. I mean, 19 and 2. Like, how how can a human being do that? It, it's in, it, over 9 rounds, you know, 2.11 KPR, 78% survivor, 100% cost, uh, flawless on entry. He, I think he got at least one 4K, several 2K, maybe he got two 4Ks? Uh, and th the last round he aces, he gets all 5 kills. But I guess I can just look at the thingy here. And JR gets a 2K, a 2K, oh wait, start at the beginning. Uh, yeah, so he gets a 2k, he gets a 4k, he's playing knock, he gets a 2k, he gets a 2k, he gets a 2k, and he gets a 5k, he gets an ace. Uh, absolutely incredible. I think, I, I think this is probably a more impressive performance than the other two. Like, especially, like, the first one, I mean, I guess statistically, it's better, but this, that's back when people weren't nearly as good, that's SI 2018. That's like, that, that was the same, that was the event that that, uh penta eg match was that that was like almost the birth of modern c or i don't know maybe not that was a long time ago and then the other game was like two years ago different game but i guess you still play till seven and i think this i i think this is a more impressive performance than this uh i mean astonishing if you just want to look at kill death ratio i mean a 9.5 it's got to be one of the highest recorded where somebody got more than one death like I'm sure there's you know some number of eleven and ones, twelve and ones, or whatever. But for somebody to get two deaths or more, uh, this maybe it's the highest KD ever. And of course, I'm not gonna look through all the games, but yeah, two point eleven KPR survive. All all this stuff, incredible, like inhuman performance, better than everything, anything ever. But I guess uh, let's go back to the games and finish that up. Dark Zero beats G2. This is probably unexpected. Like people, G2 was second in their region. Dark Zero was fourth in NA. Dark Zero seemed to be having issues. They could. They won all their games in overtime except for one, so they were really struggling to close out, but they, they just stomped G2. And then another unexpected result, Furia beat SHG in 15 rounds, 8-7. to seven. They played on Coastline, uh, which is questionable. Like, SSG is probably the better strategic team, so one wonders why they would go to Coastline. Uh, I think probably SSG wins on any other map. Not necessarily, but I think probably so. So, yeah, Furia beat SSG. And then Nip DZ goes all 15 rounds. Uh, probably nobody expected this before they saw the DZ G2 game, but after having seen this, uh, you know, world champions versus uh, all time great performance by NJR. But they weren't able to win DZ. So uh, yeah, NIP takes it in 15 rounds. I put on Cafe. I didn't actually, I watched the last five rounds of this game, but I was watching another game. So I assume it was a very exciting game. I think I think DZ actually I think it was a three three half, but if I remember right, somebody was saying that two of those rounds came down to like one v one. So if Dark Zero had just won the one v ones, they would have been up five one and they would have won the game without overtime and all this stuff. But anyways, uh Invictus Gaming, one of the APEC teams, they beat TSM seven five. Um, I mean, I don't think most of the time anyone could have predicted any of the APEC teams winning like any of their games, but uh Invictus seven fives TSM. Sonics barely beats Team 1. There was some shit talk going on in this game. Um, back and forth and some drama on Twitter with Yeti accusing the team of doing something. And then they said they didn't do it. And then he said sorry because he was going, he was assuming things. Anyways, whatever. And also, you know, a little bit more drama. The SSG were, uh, they scrimmed, oh, they scrimmed these guys, Invictus Gaming. And apparently their coach, Gig, I think his name is, he like, well, leaked their operators, but I guess he didn't explicitly say what operators. He said they were funky fans, and it became a giant meme instantly, and it was probably played out. Anyways, a little bit more drama, and I guess it was uh, no beef really against the team, but just their coach, but whatever. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, SQ beats one, barely, on consulate. CAG, Cyclops, they beat SQ 7-4 on Chalet. They pulled out the Clash, they pulled out the Montane, and SQ just really couldn't deal with it. Uh, Cyclops, I guess, is probably... I think they were, like, undefeated in APAC or whatever. They were... I mean, they have to be the best APAC team, but but that APAC... I don't I don't ever watch APAC, but it's decided, uh, divided into, like, North and South or whatever, but... 
We beat SQ. Uh, maybe we'll make it out of groups. Maybe Invictus will make it out of groups too. Uh, they lose. They they lost to Empire eight six. But I didn't watch this game either. But I I tu I checked the stream and they were up like. They were on match point before Empire was on match point. They were up like 6-4 or 6-5 or something, and then I guess Empire just won several rounds in a row. They took the game. And then Damn Juan Gaming Kia, Damn Juan Kia, however you call him, 7-4's G2 on Clubhouse. And I didn't get to watch this game either, except for the last few rounds, but Rin went 19 and something. Um, put up, I guess, I guess it's the second best single performance of the day, but... Since Damwon only played one game and DZ played two games, NJR's other game he didn't do nearly as well as in his first. He still did well. He was, I think, the best in, best in the lobby, or at least the best on his team in this game. But his average fell lower than, than Rin's single game performance for this game. And they were supposed to play one more game against... Um, who would it have been? Nip? Would it have been Nip? Are they in the... Yeah, yeah, they were supposed... To, I think they were supposed to play, uh, play Ninjas in Pajamas, but the, the schedule ran too late, so I think they rescheduled it. So, yeah, that's all 13 games for the day. More than not, I guess, went the way they were expected, but there were definitely some ep upsets. A lot of potential here for teams to make comebacks. Like, I mean, it's, it's pretty unlikely that, say, like Liquid will not make it and TSM will make it, but I mean, it's possible that one of those things happens. Uh, similar here, it's uh, probably pretty difficult that BDS doesn't make it and one makes it, but I mean, it's even like pretty difficult for for Liquid to... to not, well, I mean, like, they, they could not make it, right? You have to play, you have to play six games in, in all the group except for Group B. So, I mean, you could just keep, start losing every game. But yeah, no, two... Regulation wins to start with is a pretty solid way to start out. And that was that was day one.